here's the plan. We take Dave Jones, a local chef of great renown, and a celebrity assistant to help him out in the kitchen with a certain recipe. On top of that, we throw in someone that knows absolutely nothing but is ever too willing to help with every step. That is what happens when you get too many cooks. Are you hungry yet? Tell us what we have here started off today. We're going to make some chicken stir fry and a good cook always starts off with fresh vegetables and you have the orange, yellow, red peppers, uh, broccoli, cauliflower and carrots. So that's a red pepper? Yes. You know, uh, I thought that was green. No. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm color deficient. So what happens if a green pepper gets thrown in by mistake? Is that dangerous? It just uh, adds to the stir fry. Okay. So yeah. it's a good stir fry thing. is just a pot full of fresh vegetables. So, so far you really can't mess it up. There's nothing you cannot throw in one no. that would mess up a stir No, fry. you can put snow snap peas in there. You can put just about any vegetable you want. Okay, to help us with our stir fry today, we're going to bring in a celebrity sous chef. And uh, before we do, I have to know what, what is a sous chef? That term is, uh, it sounds to me like, like a legal term. Like It's a cooking rank. Um, it's always the cook's helper. So it's the second in command? Yep, it's the one that takes all the heat. Okay, and they're the ones that, that come and go out of the kitchen. Yeah, the chef never takes the heat. Okay, today uh, you're going to take some heat, though, because uh, oh. we have Connie Jury coming in. Okay. And uh, so this is school board stuff, so you have to be on your best behavior. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Jerry Orlando, and welcome to Orlando Brothers Golden Dawn, a family-owned business for over 25 years. We know our customers, and we know what you like. The freshest produce, a meat department stocked with the finest cuts, an in-store bakery, and a mouth-watering deli. And you can count on us to greet you with a smile and carry your groceries to your car. So stop by and see us at Orlando Brothers Golden Dawn on Main Street in Conneaut. We're saving this cart right here for you. This is my fifth year on the board and the reason I am a member of the Board of Education is because I think that the most important thing that a community can do is educate their children. I worked for the schools for 33 years and that gave me the desire to serve on this board to see if I could help. With us today is Connie Jury of the Board of Education and Connie we're doing stir fry today and unless you can go ahead and whip it out yourself uh, do you have any questions? Uh, I guess we'll just go step by step with Dave. Okay. Thank you for having me here. It's quite an honor. Nice to see you again, Dave. Yeah, I haven't nice seen see you, you since what? Southeast? Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> long time. <laughs> Dave was a student way back when. Yeah. Could he stand the heat back then? Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Sensitive area. Okay, what's the first thing we do? He always was taller than me, though. <laughs> All right, first, what are the tools we need to start? Well, you're gonna need a good, sharp chef knife. Um, okay. you're probably also gonna need a serrated knife. Now, what's, what, what's the difference here? This is Rambo, and that's uh, Psycho, so uh, <laughs> what's the... <laughs> well, this would be more for the chopping, and this would be more for the slicing. Oh, okay, okay. You get them down to little pieces like this, and you get them to smaller pieces. No, you can give them the smaller pieces with that too, but this would be like for slicing the tops off or slicing the stems off. Okay, okay, good. Now, um, so it is important, you, you shouldn't do it all with one knife. You really um, need, you need the, it's the tools of the trade. Yeah, I'd, I would need them both. Okay. Uh, what about pots and pans? Uh, we what, have, what, Mike, why don't you read them with a question? Okay. All right, so we got, we got <coughs> these down here. What else do we need? Oh, we're going to need a, a good walk. Uh, something that's coated makes it tossing much easier. Now, is that why do you want to walk as opposed to? Uh, you'd be able to toss it better in a walk. It's got the higher walls, and that's got a flat bottom. Yeah, I thought they were round. 
Uh, not necessarily. So it doesn't matter? No. Uh, the, the rounder walks, or you'd see them in the Chinese restaurants where they fit over right. a certain burner. Oh, okay, so these burners have... That, right. That wok won't roll. <laughs> that wok won't roll. Okay, have you ever cooked with a wok before? Once, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, did it go well? Yes, it did. Okay, yes, I, won't, did. I won't ask if you've used any of this before, though. Yeah. What did you call it? Uh, that's the psycho. That's a psycho. That's the psycho. <laughs> okay, got it. Psycho ramble. Okay, so now what was our first step with the tools now that we've got? Uh, well, basically, uh, you know, just starting, just take the pepper, slice it down. Okay, so before I get myself in trouble, right, we're going we're to let the sous yep. chef get in trouble and uh, we'll let you cut away. Okay, thank you, Dave. Like this? Yep. Okay. Keep my fingers out of the way, right? right. Whoops. Yep, you don't need this part. Well, how about that? Can you take that off of there? Or? Okay. What, what's that called? These white part. Stick. I would say that's just the inside of the the the, the red the rib okay. of the vegetable. Now, is this where the Rambo comes in? Just yep. You would actually take it and uh, slice it. On an angle. Yep, you don't get your fingers in there. Do I have to do it that fast? All right, officially, how many times have you cut yourself? None. Ever? How do you do it so Sous fast? Sous chefs cook themselves. <laughs> <laughs> chefs don't normally cut. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's let, just to show the difference between the expert and the... Do that one more time, Dave. Okay. Now, one thing you want to make sure that you keep with uh, with the chef knife, you want to make sure that the, the, the top never leaves the table, right? Oh, wow. And then it's just rocking. It's just a rock. Just rock the knife back and forth. Let the knife do all the work. And that is, you make it look a lot easier than what it is, Dave. Just rock it. Yeah, but rock it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Mike, you try. Oh. Let's see, let's see you do it. I was just going to say how good you were doing. Should we get the Band-Aids? <laughs> yes. No, you, you say keep this down? Keep that, keep the, keep the tip of the knife on the board. Okay. I, all right. Okay. You got to cut something. <laughs> that's easy. Well, that's, see, that, that's not right. Why not? Is that just too loud? Well, yeah, that's going to annoy the chef. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yep. All, all fingers intact. Mm -hmm. She okay. got us both to do that. Did you Great. That? Okay. See, now you've officially done peppers. You wanted to finish them up, right? So you yep. want them all in Yeah, we'll finish them up. Then I'm we'll going to the other peppers. Now you've got red pepper here. Why not green as opposed to, is it? You can add the green. Uh, right now, the peppers just add the color. So, okay. So they add the color to the whole, the whole dish. So just being shallow and just going for a little. Yeah, the, the color is the, all, all of the peppers. And then you have the broccoli and the cauliflower mixed in with that with the carrot. And it just, it just makes everything come alive. So, uh, OK, so you, now we've got, uh, should we do more peppers? Or look at yep. this. We're actually going to cut everything up. That is one big carrot. That is, when they get big like this, that's, that's commercial. baby carrots. Yeah, that's a now, commercial. Doesn't that change the taste? No. Not at all? No, it's all the same carrot. Well, let's get the peppers out of the way. Just put them right in here. No fingers and toes. Nope. Not yet, anyway. Okay. We'll uh, go ahead and have you peel this up. Now, is that how you... Wait, it's a tough care. I, it looks like you need to get Paul Bunyan in here for that. <laughs> is that. Is that the correct way to peel? Yeah, that's not how I do it. Okay, well, it's just how you do it. How do you feel that, Dave? Oh, jeez. Oh, See, I, I, oh. I, I peel it away from myself because if I did it that way, I'd, I'd wind right, up cutting you? myself. Yeah. And sous chefs normally cut themselves, so I kind of teach them this way. It looks like a yam. Watch it, Mike. See, no? I like the, see, I like the whole effect where things fly. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, well, we're now just going to like a normal carrot. It, it's 
All right, and we're going to cut the ends off. And then we're just going to... Watch the knuckles. Here you go, Mike. Give that a shot. Well, now, what's... This is a grater. Right. Uh, I prefer the term better, but uh, what... What if you do another size hole here? What, what, what's it? What's that? Give what me. is that? The slicer? Yeah, that give me that slices them. Really makes no difference. And what about here? That would be too small. That would actually kind of mush up in the, like in the stir fry. Yeah, carrots. right. So we want to. Okay. Yeah, so you'd want small. some kind of a substance to actually see something. See, I learned early in life that if you do it wrong enough, no one asks you again. And, to help. and I've done that enough. Okay. Yeah, I am going to hurt something there. <laughs> There must be a technique I'm getting wrong. Um, there you go, oh, Connie. Fix the carrot for me, thank you. So what really goes in the swallow? Watch your holes? fingers. I know knuckles. Um, okay, we got plenty of carrot there now. That's good. Yep. That would be hard to clean. So we'll put that in the pot. That's your job. What? That's why I did them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we need to go yeah. And we'll move on to our other peppers and just slice them the same way. Okay. Yeah, Matt, can you come up just a little bit and kind of center that? Okay. Now, do you just throw these, uh, like this, this grated carrot? Yeah, that just gets thrown away. You want to put them in that bowl. Okay. And kind of put all the garbage we have a salad later for our audience. So those have now been chopped, is that the term? And now they're going to be sliced. Right. Is that, okay. Am I rocking the right way this time, Dave, or am I still rocking the wrong way? I got this upside down, don't I? Yep, okay. He's probably wondering, how did I pick a sous chef that rocks the wrong way, right? So you, you take all the heat for everything, so. He's, he's probably thinking he would have had this cooked and eaten by yeah. now. <laughs> You're doing a fine job. Thank you. Uh -oh. Okay. Mike, did you know, I do the wrong thing? Nope, this you're good. Here. See if it... It's quieter. Think, what do you think, Chef David? But it, it's not impressive, though. No, it's not, not an as, angle. You're, you're not impressing anybody with that butter knife. Yeah. That's not a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Mine done rocks. Better there you than go. That. Now, now yeah. you got a man tool. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Yeah, you don't get much thinner than that. Check that out. Yeah. I missed. Just leave all the fingers attached. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is pretty, I have to admit. Back to door. Do you want me to finish them up? Oh, uh, yes. That yeah, would let's, be let's, good. let's see. Yeah, let's see how pro let's, does it. Let's see the pro. Wow, look at that. He can go a lot faster if he's not complaining. <laughs> he's using the back. He's not going in the middle yes. like we were. Ah. Yeah, now we learn the trick, huh? Sous chefs have always got to learn it the hard way. I guess so. We did. I'm a slow learner, too. <laughs> All right. We wind up going to the broccoli. All right, now with the broccoli, you want to take as close to the, to the top of the broccoli as you can. All right, and then just discard that. Kind of break it apart a little bit. All right, now these part, these pieces here, for them to cook fast enough, because stir fry goes really, really quick as soon as the cooking process starts, you want them really oh, wow. small. So then they could, so then, so then they, they cook up really fast. The less stem, the better, because the stem's the one that's going to be the hardest to cook. Now, is the stem good for you? Yeah. Oh, okay. My grandson used okay. to call these treats. You want it treats? Yeah, if I was actually making uh, broccoli soup, I would use the stems as the base. 
Now, what's, where does a floret come into this? Is that the whole thing, or is that one of these little things? One of the little things. That's a floret? Yep. All right, just, well, just cut this in half, and then just start Go chopping. Ahead, Mike. Me again. See, I'm a gentleman. I, I, don't, I don't say no. That's supposed to go at that angle. Though, right? Yeah. If you keep your, put your fingers like this, you won't cut them. Like this? Yeah, you know, kind of buckle your fingers like this oh, okay. and kind of ride the knife down your knuckle. Okay. I bet lumberjacks do that too. I didn't, oh, there's a hole. Okay, I'll do my part. That leaves a lot of little sesame seeds and stuff there when you do it that way. That need to be cut up? Do yep. those get lost in the process or are they oh, we're gonna cut the other one too? Oh we're gonna cut the other one. I thought yep. I was out of it. Yeah, you're not getting out of this thing. Okay, go ahead. So you think you could use one of these knives at a board meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speak, speaking of the blades, what's going on with this windmill? Oh, is, isn't that exciting? They were really supposed to have it going and crossed over by Friday, but I noticed that it's still not spinning yet. But it is going to provide 60% of the electricity for our middle school, and we are just really very excited about that. It's just, it's just really exciting to, to get into the windmill energy. What are you going to do with the first kid you find up there in it? <laughs> well, we have a lot of faith in the company that put it up there, and I don't think we're going to find any, any kids in the woodmill. At least I hope we're not going to find any kids in the woodmill. Maybe a few teachers, but not kids. <laughs> Is that small enough, Dave? Am I doing that small enough? Yeah. I'm not rocking, though. Yeah, you're right. But, um, you know, we've been watching him go up and watching the one down there at the lake. I think it's really wonderful because next gen company who put the windmills up are using Conneaut as an example and I think that Conneaut is really getting its name spread around the country now and I think people are actually looking on the map and saying where's Conneaut. I think it's great for us right now mm -hmm. to have that alternate energy. What are some other exciting things going on? Oh. Our basketball teams are doing pretty good. Winter athletic season is coming to an end. And uh, spring sports will be starting soon. Okay, and then we're going to start with some Brock cauliflower. And probably tear some of this off. Yeah, cauliflower is very similar to broccoli in a lot of ways to me. Do you say florets with cauliflower too? Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. We, we are uh, the high school in its fifth year of academic excellence, which we're very proud of. And we have a banner on the high school. We're very proud of our academic achievement in Conneaut. All right, so I've got the cauliflower here. What purpose does it serve? It doesn't look as good as, as the red and yellow peppers. It doesn't really taste like anything. Oh, I, I think it does. Yeah, you put that, it's, it's got a good flavor to it. Well, maybe once you've handled it. Yeah. What about uh, cauliflower ear? Ear? If you eat too much, do you get the, do you get? It's kind of got a nutty taste to it. Mm -hmm. That's appropriate. <laughs> And uh, cauliflower does come in, I mean, generally, cauliflower is white, but it does come in purple, yellow, 
orange. They do have those available also. How do you know when it goes bad? See, it gets moldy on top. So it turns white? No, green. Okay. Is the purple and yellow cauliflower easily accessible? Can we find that anywhere, Dave? Um, some of your bigger supermarkets, yeah. Because yeah. everybody's thinking, why don't we have purple here if everything's supposed to look good? Yeah. Um, it's just the, the normal stir fry just has the, the white because it has the other colors of all the other product that goes into it. So. I suppose you're going to blame that on the sous chef. Um, Geez, we have that on camera, so you <laughs> can't. All right, now what about gas? You know, a lot of people say, oh, broccoli will make me burp or whatever like that. Um, do you know, do you get into that? Do you worry about that when you're preparing mm -mm. A, a, a dish like this? Or does the stir fry take out that aspect of the vegetable? All right. There's your stir fry mixture. Now we'll clean up our mess. Oh, we left some rock, uh, cauliflower yeah. out. Is that on purpose? Yeah, we got plenty in there, though. Okay. Now, none of us have on hair nets. Is that an issue? Uh, only when you're in a cook line and you're cooking for the public. Okay. Right now we're just cooking amongst ourselves, so. So it's okay, but normally, uh, if we were feeding others, yeah, we would need hair nets. Okay. And gloves. Because it's even more necessary for me, because if something falls in, you won't see it. Yeah. Yeah. The mark of a great person, organization, or civilization is their ability to withstand the test of time. Conneaut Telephone Company has withstood the test of time. From before the Spanish-American War, through World War I and into the Roaring Twenties, Conneaut Telephone Company ushered communications from the age of the telegraph office to the era of a telephone in every home. Through the trying times of the Great Depression, our operators were there connecting State Street to Wall Street, and they were also there connecting soldiers and their families with news of victory in World War II. After 70 years in business, Conneaut Telephone Company saw the turbulence of the 60s give way to triumph as we witnessed a glimpse of the leaps technology would make in the decades to come. Over 111 years later, Conneaut Telephone Company is the same company, with the same name and the same commitment to meeting the communications needs of Conneaut. Conneaut Telephone Company, standing tall against the test of time. Okay, so what's next? You got you kicked on the... Uh... Oh, yeah, we got a... Cook off the rice, and uh, then we gotta cook off the chicken. All right. Now, most generally, the chicken. You need this out of the way. The chicken has a thin side and it has a thicker side. All right. So I always like to take and even them up. Is this, is this a uh, uh, meat tender meat, meat, meat tenderizer. tenderizer? And okay. I usually do it in a bag because it saves the mess. It's black. Yeah, yeah, because it's really a pretty messy deal. Wouldn't it save a step just to do this before the chicken's dead? <laughs> <laughs> do you want this? Um, <laughs> no, we're going to season it with uh, a chicken spice. What do you have in there? Uh, poultry seasoning, salt, pepper. Um, there's a mixture of other seasonings that I would rather not reveal because it's probably we're the only ones in town that use it. So it's pretty. So we'll uh, heat up a pan. You don't cut the chicken first? Nope. No, nope, we'll do that as the chicken is cooling. What are, you, what are you pouring in there, Dave? Olive oil. A little bit of olive oil in there. Wait for your pan to get hot. If the pan, uh, generally if the pan, if the oil doesn't get hot first and you put the chicken in there, it's going to stick to the bottom of the pan. 
Now we are using a non-stick pan, but it's still probably going to stick some. You don't put that in egg white or anything? You just do it like that, huh? Nope, oh, just season it like that. And uh, um, give it a couple minutes. Then the rice will go in as soon as it starts boiling. Pretty quick here. I've seen those hungry? holes. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen those holes on lids before. Is that for a specific reason? Actually, I've never used something like that. But I mean, usually we use colanders, but uh, we don't generally do things in small pots like that. So, All right, go ahead and put the rice in there. And how, how much rice? All of it. All of it. Yep. All of it. Okay. Right. Do we stir? Yep. Give it a quick stir. Let it come to a boil again. As soon as it starts boiling, let it sit. And we'll go on to the. Oil's getting hot. Yep. Okay, so there's smoke coming off the oil. Give the pan a shake a little bit, it kind of sears it. You really don't want to cook it completely. If you do that, the chicken will get dry. All right, so we just want to kind of sear both sides. You got a nice gas stove to work off. Yeah, you got a nice flame. Oh yeah, they, they do a nice job here. The kitchen's spotless. When you cook that. Right. At that heat. And I didn't uh, season the other side of that chicken, so that's what I'm doing now. All right, then we're going to set this off to the side. Then we'll get into the good stuff. The reason why you don't cook this all the way is because when, when you're almost done with your stir fry, you're going to put your chicken back in with it cut up. Okay. And then you're going to finish it off with the sauce and the stir fry, and it's all going to kind of come together. All right. I'm just going to set this off to the side. It'll continue cooking in the pan. And this one here, we're going to start off with a little bit of butter. Is there a difference between butter and margarine? Yes. Mar margarine is uh, more water soluble, uh, where butter is more the creamy, rich flavor and taste. Wouldn't, wouldn't the butter tend to burn a little bit faster than the oil? Uh, it will. I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in it. So you just uh, smash the garlic. Yeah. What did that do? Mash it down just to loosen up the, the outer skin. Okay. Put it in our garlic press. And wait for the proper moment because if we put it in there too early, the garlic will burn and it will be a disaster. Is there a reason that they say vampires don't like garlic. <laughs> Nothing that I would know. All right. Oh, that looks beautiful. How many people is this going to This will be one serving. That's our rice coming along. Looks beautiful. Yep, yeah. Almost ready. Yep. Still got some liquid in it. Yep. Lovely. I'm putting a little bit of soy sauce, a uh, little bit of olive oil, just to mix with the butter. Get my 
myself a little more room here. Why are you cooking it like that instead of doing it with a spoon or a spatula? Just because it's fun? Yeah. Yep. I think Mike should try doing a flip. There you go, Mike. Oh, I don't know. If you get stuff down in the fire, that's bad, right? You know, that, yes, okay. It means you're going to clean up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I like the way that the food stays in the same place when you do that. You know, I think that's supposed to mix up. I, I bet you can't even lift that. You're going to cut your chicken into strips. Oh my gosh, you're right. Oh, we're missing the chicken. We're gonna we're gonna mix a little bit of uh, chicken broth with teriyaki and soy, and uh, hit a little, a little bit of ginger to kind of create that sauce. And then um, we're gonna need to put together our slurry. A what? A slurry. Slurry is a, a thickening agent for. What you call it? Slurry. Slurry. Yeah. And what you do is you take a little bit of water. Add cornstarch to that water. And you'll see why in a little bit why it's called a slurry. I've had a slurry before. It's usually <laughs> red or, or blue. It's going to get you sooner or later that everything keeps coming your way. Yeah. So this thickens the sauce. Right. This will thicken the teriyaki. I'm probably not whisking this well enough, right, Dave? Well, it's got to get it's got to get. A little bit more, a little bit more thicker. Feel? Yeah, see how it gets. And it kind of gets kind of roughed. Actually, that's the slurry part of it. That's why they call it a slurry. Okay. It's just it's roll. It's kind of a thick substance that, and if you added any more, it'd be hard to stir. You wouldn't be able to stir it, but you don't want it to get to that point. And you didn't talk about this this tool here. The wire whisk. Wow. Yeah, you're really good at that. Shh, don't tell nobody. And what specifically do you, does this do? I mean, you could be doing this with a spoon, probably, and get a similar effect. Um, Why would someone want a whisk? Uh, just to whip, you know, batters and stuff like that. So they can whisk away. Yep. We're going to drop the chicken in there. Put in there. Yep. And now what's going in there? Teriyaki. Teriyaki. Chicken broth. Yep. I'm amazed that you can do that. You leave everything that can. <laughs> practice. Practice, sous chef. Practice. Practice, okay. <laughs> A little bit of ginger. Now, how do you know to put ginger in? Uh, it's in most most recipes, you know, ginger, soy sauce, teriyaki. Do you think bit, uh, the ground pepper that you grind is better than the regular pre-ground? I believe so. Same with the salt? Makes me look professional. I think, I think it stays fresher in these containers than if you had something that was sitting open. Good luck for the sous chef. Yeah, what we got on the bottom? We got some sauce stuff. It's got to get thickened up. More teriyaki. So you're just kind of guessing. Yep. So no one can really have your recipe. No. Nope. It's not going to be on after the show. <laughs> <laughs> How's our rice coming along? Looks like it's ready. We'll be plating here pretty quick. Um, you don't want to cook your vegetables too long. Peppers are probably going to be the closest thing done. You want some crunch to your to your vegetables. You don't want something that's mushy and you know you don't want to cook the life out of your vegetables. Gotcha. However, you do want to cook the life out of your chicken. The chicken. Yeah, yeah. Chicken was pretty done when I was cutting it there, so we were good there. Do you think that? Uh, 
overseas that they actually do use. Stir okay. that, see if y'all oh, stiff wow. that is on the bottom. Slurry. Yeah. Cats wow. and dogs. Do that. See, that's where it gets oh, wow. a slurriness. It's a thick substance. Um, now, this substance here you can put in soup to make soup thicker, and it's tasteless. This will not taste like cornstarch or flour or anything like that. And it doesn't break down. Most of your roux will break down in the heat factor, where this will not. And beef tip and noodles. That would thicken beef tip and noodles if you're trying to make yeah. beef tip and noodles. Yeah. This is going to go pretty quick, so. Will it stiffen your collar? <laughs> wow. See that? Yeah. That looked like uh, restaurant quality real quick, didn't it? Is that all? That's all you're going to use out of that big bowl? Yeah. Well, it might need a little bit more. And we're ready to plate. That's one serving? That would be a serving at the restaurant, yep. Wow. Okay, and then we're going to take... It looks different under restaurant lighting. A little bit of the rice. That right in the center. Is that how you serve it at the restaurant with the rice in the middle? Mm-hmm. And to garnish, cherry in the center. Beautiful. And that would complete your stir fry. Very nice. Bon appetit. Yeah, plenty of tasting spoons. Everybody guesses first. Now, most generally, you would serve this at the table with a little more teriyaki and a little more soy, just to add to it. If somebody wants it a little more richer, bolder. Very, very good. Yeah. We've got the perfect amount of soy sauce. Yeah, great. Okay. Does our host not do vegetables? Do not do vegetables. I had some yellow peppers. They look really good, but uh, <laughs> Can you taste it they taste just like the orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you save the cherry for last? That's dessert. Because usually after this, you're going to eat nothing else. <laughs> All right, so that's chicken stir fry. Thanks to our chef, Crazy Dave Jones, and uh, Connie Jerry. Thanks for being our sous chef, and no one got sued in the process. We'll see you next time on Too Many Cooks. It's not just one person. Mm -hmm. One person. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was exciting, and I enjoyed working with Dave, because I remember Dave when he was in school, and that really made it fun. That made it a lot of fun, and of course, working with Mike Breeze is always a pleasure. Um, it was very interesting. I learned a few things and uh, it was a very enjoyable experience.